Today I am here with uh, the Russian philosopher Alexander Dugin. In this interview, we intend to go over some of Dugin's uh, well-known concepts and also some of his less spoken of concepts. Uh, here we're going to go into his fourth political theory. We're going to start off with that. So uh, before I begin, uh, Mr. Dugin, could you please uh, give us an overview of what the fourth political theory is? So it is not easy to, to explain in some words. Uh, first of all, hello, uh, everybody. Um, so first political theory is based on the historical analysis of political ideologies. First um, fundamental remark consists in the fact that all main uh, political ideologies, uh, liberalism, communism, and fascism or nationalism, all of them have uh, Western modern roots because uh, they, they pretend to be universal, uh, communism, liberalism, nationalism, but in the reality, they belong to very small portion, this very small period, historical period and geographical area. It is uh, uh, all three political ideologies appeared uh, in the Western European, West European modernity, and they pretend to be universal, and that already creates many contradictions. Because uh, if we are um, uh, presumed to be free and to uh, to have the possibility to choose uh, what belief or disbelief, uh, so we need uh, to have much broader context in history and geography than European modernity. And three political theories, liberalism, communism, and nationalism, uh, they don't, uh, don't cover all the possibility. They belong to the very small, small part of the human history, of human population. They totally disregard uh, non-Western uh, political experience or pre-modern uh, Western political experience. And that's already is very suspicious. I think if we uh, take in consideration the very nature of three political uh, theories, liberalism, communism, and, and, uh, and fascism, it is already something colon colonial in that, something racist, something ethno ethnocentrist inside if we are obliged to 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 deal only with these three uh political ideologies so uh, a fourth political theory from the very beginning from the start advocates uh the possibility to 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 go beyond these uh three political theory theories so uh the the main goal of force political theory to secure the ground, theoretical, epistemological ground, ground for something outside of the Western political modernity with its uh, three main branches, main, main, main currents. Uh, but if we, for example, return to very narrow in the reality, indeed very narrow space of Western modernity. So we could uh, we could follow uh, development uh, of uh, uh, and dialectic of these three political theories because all of them pretended uh, from the very beginning to uh, incorporate the the future. They, all three of them, communism, liberalism, and fascism, uh, pretended to, 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 to bring with them the, the image of the future. And the fight between these three political theories was precisely the, the meaning of the 20th century. The communism, fascism, and liberalism, they fought each other precisely to define who is the real hair, hair of the, of, the, of the modernity and to whom belong the future. And the, the result of this uh, 20th century was univocal, was very clear, because first of all, third political theory, fascism, nationalism, has lost the struggle against a union alliance between 
first, first political theory, liberalism, and second political theory, communism, and uh, and uh, and uh, get, uh, got out uh, from uh, his history. Uh, fascism after Second World War uh, doesn't exist. And uh, there uh, rested, there, there was only two political theories, first and second, liberalism and communism. And that was the meaning of the Cold War. And finally, liberalism has won over communism. And in 1991, uh, uh, the communism was over. Uh, and with, the, with the, um, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. And so, by the result, by the end of the 20th century, we see that Western political modernity uh, uh, is represented on, by only one political ideology that became, became global. So the Western, uh, Western um, civilization, modern Western civilization uh, became uh, uniquely liberal and every, everything that uh, con that uh, challenged uh, this uh, victory of liberalism was considered to be or the or uh, resi uh, something like residues, something uh, uh, like rests of, of fascism or communism, or something totally totally uh, obsolete, something uh, that has no right to exist. And that was very interesting term in the political modernity, and that is. Precisely in that moment, uh, when uh, fourth political theory appears, and that uh, the victory of liberalism has shown the real totalitarian, racist aspect of this ideology that was judged to be um, in defense of freedom, comparing with uh, fascism and communism. I, and I agree, uh, liberalism is more, more, more liberal, more, more free than. Totalitarian, uh, totalitarian systems uh, uh, like fascism or communism, but wh when there is no more uh, formal enemies, as well uh, modernist, as well Western, because communism and fascism uh, both are Western, they are part of this political modernity, but wh when they disappear, liberalism has shown that I, uh, liberalism itself is totalitarian system, racist, uh, imposing, trying to impose its own principles as something universal on the global scale. It is, it is known as globalization. So, fourth political theory, to 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 be sure, uh, uh, represent a kind of rejection of this uh, liberal totalitarianism. And in, um, the, in, in this figure, figure of uh, political liberalism, it is rejection of all political modernity. It is not just a return to Western modern alternatives to liberalism. It is not the return of communism or to nationalism. It is an uh, invitation to to reject radically universalist pretensions of this global totalitarian uh, new liberalism, new democracy, so-called democracy, that this is in, in the reality totalitarian uh, dictatorship of, of the minorities and not mm -hmm. uh, just uh, a real democracy when everybody hears uh, their position and take into consideration position of others. There is no other. For modern liberals, there are liberals and uh, enemies of open society. So it is, it is Popperian formula, Popperian slogan. So every uh, everybody who is not with a liberal is fascist or communist on something to destroy, enemy of open society. That is purely totalitarian, Manichaean vision of modern days totalitarian liberalism. And uh, rejection, but the main sense, the main uh, direction of the first political theory is uh, rejection of liberalism without falling into the trap of other uh, two alternative political Western political uh, theories. Uh, so it is not communist, ni neither fascist nor nationalist uh, critics of liberalism. So uh, the idea of fourth political theory theory is to find the ground outside of political modernity. For example, 
appeal, uh, appealing to pre-modern experience of, this, uh, of the West or trying to find that source of inspiration outside of the modern Western culture. For example, in the Asian society, is in uh, pre-modern Western Middle Ages, uh, culture, so everybody, or in postmodern project. So that is a kind of junction, that is a kind of unification of two uh, perspectives of critics of uh, modernity, pre-modern critic of modernity and postmodern critic of modernity. It is not just archaic return to the pre-modern situation, it is a uh, rehabilitation of uh, pre-modern uh, values uh, of middle uh, middle age uh, structure of Western uh, culture and acceptance of of non-Western type of, polit uh, of political uh, organization uh, and at the same time the radical criticism may be following some interesting lines of postmodernism, the radical criticism of uh, um, modernity as such. That is more or less uh, fourth political theory. And the last point um, that uh, should be mentioned, I think, that is the change of the subject, because each uh, political theory has its own um, uh, artificial subject. Uh, liberalism is, uh, puts uh, in the center individual, communism, the class, and the fascism, nation, state, or race. All these concepts are totally artificial. There, in the reality, uh, there is no pure individual, it is abstraction. There is no class, it is other abstraction. There is no, uh, and nation is artificial creation uh, 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 as modern state. Uh, and race is an artificial creation. So all these uh, artificial abstractions are modern and Western. And uh, how we could find, how we could find, how we could um, uh, gain the terrain, the, the, the space for force political theory, when all the classical subject of subjects of political other political theories of Western modernity uh, should be should, should be rejected and uh, the response uh, that uh, I uh, I have given to, to this challenge and my friend Alain de Benoit, French philosopher of New Right, shares this attitude and finds it very very. Uh, inspiring uh, to uh, replace classical subject of individuals, uh, class or nation by the concept uh, of uh, Heidegger, by the concept of design and design as uh, people, uh, design als Volk. Uh, that could be the key to deconstruct following Heideggerian epistemology and uh, existential analytics to deconstruct the modernity and to reinstall in the center of interest uh, this thinking human presence uh, in its relation to the world uh, around us. That is more or less uh, main features of uh, forced political theory, but uh, Heideggerian uh, philosophy is a bit complicated, complicated, and for to to explain to the larger audience, uh, we, we 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 use uh, uh, existential and um, category of the people, the people, the, not a nation uh, that is political concept, not neither um, sum of individuals, uh, neither nor. Uh, nor class, uh, uh, but people as organic historical uh, uh, whole, holistic concept of the people that is the beer of identity, of on ontology, of the values, and this and a multiplicity of the peoples is as well very important feature of force political theory that is based on multipolarity. There are so many. Uh, uh, truths uh, as there are um, many peoples and each people 
has its own universe. It is the very particular rela relation to to being. So because the, the 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 soul of the people, the identity of the people is defined by its very special relation to time, to to space, to nature, to God, or to gods, uh, and uh, to uh, to to other human or uh, or not human entities. And there is no universal pattern than that. Everybody follows, every people follows its own logos, its own destiny, and that creates uh, the basis and, and the uh, lay principles uh, of the real uh, pluralistic understanding of human nature and the history uh, really open and not put in this concentrational camp as liber liberalism uh, wants to, to do. So uh, you would say that one aspect that uh, distinguishes the fourth political theory from the other three theories would be its rejection of universalism, correct? Absolutely. And uh, following on from that, I just heard you mention uh, that time plays an important role in the differing uh, societies. So um, in order to – do you think there's a way to change uh, uh, the experience of time within a society? But uh, when we, uh, I, did, I have dedicated to the problem philosophical interpretation of time 40 lectures in Russian. Uh, so I, I'm studying, I'm still studying, I'm still um, uh, going uh, deeper and deeper in, uh, to an understanding of, the, of, of, of what is time. For example, what we pretend to be time it is modern concept of something, uh, something totally independent from us. So we are dealing, uh, we are living with a totally uh, uh, erroneous, totally false understanding of the nature of time. That's, uh, it is absolute time of Newton, of modern physics. It is mechanical time that is totally independent from inner life of, of the people. But this time, it's once more modern Western uh, totalitarian abstraction because the real uh, structure of time uh, is different in different societies. And we, uh, and the West, in a colonial way, has replaced any kind of, uh, of temporality, any kind of time, very different, very, very special to each kind of culture and civilization by their uh, Western uh, reduced uh, and totally false understanding of time as something, uh, something uh, external, something that is totally outside of us and something universal. Once more, I am against, you know, against universalism in all aspects. So each people, each culture, each religion uh, have uh, their own times, their own temporalities, because temporality uh, depends on the culture and the culture depends on the configuration and imagination of time. And different kinds of society have cyclical time, have a fragmented time, they, the other have as for example, Aborigines in Australia, they have dream time concept. So time uh, is the part of, of the dream world in, 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 where some d divinities uh, are sleeping or awaking. So, um, uh, and for example, these Australian um, tribes, they, they don't follow external time, neither solar uh, nor luna, lunar. So they are living in a totally, totally different kind of temporality. In uh, many African societies, the time is dif different. Christian time uh, is eschatological, is oriented to the end of the world. For example, Muslim time is different. Cyclical Hindu time is uh, another aspect. Greek time of Plato or Aristotle was uh, something inside of us that was uh, the, the time was the measure of the reality and that was more or less the same thing as the human soul in Plato and in Aristotle. So time as the expression of the soul 
coming from inside outside. So that was the, the real meaning of the why uh, Aristotle has called the time the measure of the movement. The movement is something exterior. And time measuring it is, is measuring from inside, from the logos, from the from the global world soul, and uh, and uh, our souls are the parts or, or component of this world uh, world soul. So uh, with this understanding of of, of uh, multiplicity of temporalities. That is the basic principle of fourth political theory, and I think that all uh, all knowledgeable, all all competent uh, anthropologists would agree with myself. It is a great gap, gap, gap between the uh, anthropological knowledge of the modern West, very correct and very 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 uh, very true. And the uh, 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 this uh, per perverted uh, prejudices of ruling elite. So the uh, Western anthropologists, for starting from Boas, from Levi Strauss, teach us uh, and teach you Westerners, uh, or what is plurality of the human being, and you transform uh, uh, this pluralistic knowledge and totalitarian. Uh, imposition of uh, new kind of uh, liberal uh, totalitarianism. It is paradoxical. It is the kind of real ignorance of ruling political elites. So the political elites contradict to modern liberal globalist political elite contradict to, to um, scientific basis uh, of their own uh, culture. All right. Uh, I've heard you mention previously that with liberalism comes a uh, inha inherently expansionary nature, where liberalism seeks to negate the presence of uh, multipolarity, uh, especially ethnos. Uh, what is ironic, and I'm curious here if you would agree with me, is that liberalism affirms that it values diversity of cultures and, and all this, but at the same time, all it's done is negated the existence of multipolarity and replaced it with unipolarity. Would you agree with that assessment? So, but liberalism uh, from very beginning was based on very particular uh, exception of the diversity. That was exception of diversity between only individuals. That started with uh, pre-liberal concept of Thomas Hobbes and uh, John Locke, uh, who was, by the way, the father of liberalism, and all kind of diversity was accepted only on the premise, uh, on only on, on the basis, uh, under basis, uh, on the basis that uh, that we consider uh, we consider all this society as artificially constructed from um, um, uh, individuals. They 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 represent the kind of the the, the last reality. And when we speak about collective identity, in that sense, all liberals were intolerant because uh, the main main idea of liberalism to to destroy any kind of uh, of uh, uh, collective identity, and that is the, the 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 meaning of liberalism to liberate the individual from any kind of collective identity. So, if uh, uh, a liberal is tolerant and uh, could accept uh, all kind of individualities when a liberal approaches or confronts something that is collective uh, that uh, that is uh, what is collective becomes its enemy that this logic is very very uh, very clearly exposed in the Karl's, Karl Popper's uh, book on open society and its enemy. So tolerance and acceptance of, of diversity in the case of liberal concern only other liberal liberals. So you could be liberal, and if you uh, you could be liberal, and you could not not be li liberal, and if you are liberal like uh, the other liberals. So in that sense, I grant you uh, the possibility to to be uh, to be different and to be uh, and to practice practice some kind of 
different uh, different um, uh, modes of life and, and so on, but on only on the condition that you agree that the last reality of the humanity is liberalism. That is purely totalitarian, hypo hypocritic and paradoxical uh, uh, par paradoxical attitude. For example, we know that uh, uh, George Orwell mocked Soviet Union uh, with uh, the slogan, uh, every animal uh, is equal, uh, but some of animals on the animal farm uh, are more equal than other. So uh, liberals uh, um, accept everybody on the condition that they are also liberals. It is just right. the, the other, other, other um, side of the of the coin. Oh, 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 oh. And I, I think that that is precisely uh, when liberals uh, encounters encounters uh, non-liberal or collective identity. Uh, all tolerance disappears, cancel culture, uh, terrorism uh, and killing uh, um, becomes the main rule. So uh, why, for example, uh, Biden hates uh, Putin and Russia? Because we are different. And where is this uh, diversity and pluralism? And uh, we are different. We have different principles. We have different understanding of human human nature. And that is why uh, we are considered to be uh, enemy, because we have no right to be so different. So everybody is accepted on the condition that everybody is equal, equally liberal. Not right. equal in any sense, but equally liberal. But if you agree to be liberal, you could choose to be left wing liberal, right wing liberal, but you are, you are obliged to be liberal. That is liberal big brother who says so. So, yeah, essentially you can be liberal so long as you stay within the liberal paradigm, essentially, right? That's what they're saying. Yes, yes. Uh, everybody, not all the liberals should stay in the liberal paradigm. Everybody, according to liberals, should stay in the liberal paradigm. It's the unique truth. It is absolute religious truth of liberalism. I think liberalism is kind of uh, secularized uh, religion uh, of individualism. Uh, and that is atomism, a kind of social atomism. Uh, and that explains everything. Why, for example, they defend so much uh, homosexuals, transgenders and LGBT, not because they are s themselves such uh, perverted creatures or suffering creatures from this perversion. They defend the principle that every collective identity, including sexual one, should be optional, should be uh, should be based on the individual choice. And that is uh, ideology that is that has nothing to do with with um, some modes of life or sexual uh, um, preferences. It is pure ideology and that is promotion of the pure uh, indi individualism as a religious value, uh, as a religious value. And that is very, very particular. And they don't stop here uh, in the defending uh, uh, equality of the genders or this uh, uh, gender optional attitude, uh, non-binary they call it. Uh, but I think they, they are going further and they would recognize the uh, the, the subject, the personality, the, in non-human species and uh, machines and uh, artificial intelligence. And next and last step of uh, uh, liberalism will be post-humanist, uh, post-human liberalism. And they defend the robots' rights, uh, cyborgs' rights, as in the films. Uh, oh, that was already prepared, and the main, uh, uh, the, the most uh, of, of the um, of the uh, fan fantasy, fantastic uh, uh, scientific fantasy 
from previous uh, centuries. Now they uh, realized that they are here. So I think that we are kind of, we are living in the time uh, of the last human. Next next page of the history of liberalism will be post-human, and the same liberal will fight for the robots' right as they. Uh, uh, they fight today for homosexual, uh, gay marriage, uh, and so on. Right. And I've also heard you uh, mention that uh, there's a difference between liberal democracies and other forms of democracies. Could you uh, expand on that a little bit? So, for uh, yes, uh, for, uh, uh, for liberals, the only democracy is liberal democracy. Or everything that is not liberal is not democracy, and uh, they discourse stops here. But I think it is totally uh, unjust, and that is racist, and, uh, and that is very, uh, very um, uh, totalitarian attitude. For example, we could. I, I uh, am in favor of collective uh, democracy. For example, when there are collective entity as community, for example, people. That uh, I like very much the definition of democracy of Arthur Müller Vandenbroek, German philosopher of so-called conservative revolution. He has defined democracy as participation of the people and its own destiny. I, I admire. This uh, this saying, I admire this uh, these words, and I think that it is precisely what uh, I understand as the real organic democracy. If the people participate really, and not necessary with parliamentarian elections, but if the people feels that he is inside of the destiny, he is. He is the uh, he is living creature uh, uh, in, inside of the time, uh, and uh, um, the, 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 the people has part in the history and in time. That is democracy. It could uh, be uh, uh, compatible with monarchy, with some uh, religious or theocratic. Uh, uh, form, it could be compatible with secular form, it could be compatible with empire, with hierarchical society, or with some kind of e equalitarian, equalitarian community, basing on the consensus, not on the hierarchy. So, there are so many uh, many kinds of democracy outside of uh, uh, of liberal uh, democracy. And by the way, uh, it is uh, funny that uh, I have spoken with Francis Fukuyama, um, proposing to him to def to to give definition of new liberal democracy of modern days, contemporary, and he has said that is the rule of minorities directed against majority. So, in the, uh, I think uh, 100 years ago, it, it would be scandalous to, some, to, to affirm something like that, that democracy is not the rule of majority and that is rule of minorities against the majority, because majority could always choose Putin or Hitler or someone or uh, someone else. So uh, the ma majority is always suspicious uh, because majority uh, is uh, um, some collective en uh, identity, has a collective identity. And modern day is democracy and as the war against the society, against the people, against the majority, uh, led by minorities. But I think that is um self uh, very very re revealing it is re a kind of revelation for right. many uh people that still believes in this lie big lie of modern democracy i think uh the real democracy is incompatible with uh individualism liberalism so liberalism liberal democracy is not democracy at all because only uh, minorities only uh fragmented but without the whole could decide. And that is catastrophic and that could lead only to the collapse, the final collapse. So I think the real democracy should be based on the recognition of collective identity as the main uh, instance of decision. Right. So it's collective identity, the, the people being uh, revealed and uh, manifested in the society, in the state. 
Yes, uh, and I would like to say that collective identity, I don't, mm, I don't interpret in the uh, uh, mechanical way. It is not just to collect. Collective identity is common identity, or, 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 or uh, better to say existential unity of the community, the kind of spirit of community, the spirit of society, the spirit of people. It's much more important that uh, uh, all, the, all the units uh, put together, they could not create uh, the people. People creates itself and mm, expand uh, as the flower. Uh, it flourishes, uh, people, right. and uh, uh, um, units, um, citizens or, or uh, individuals are, are just a part of this uh, beautiful flower with beautiful logos inside. And uh, it is not so much collective. I, I'm using the words for uh, to, to, and the pur pur purpose to be understood better. But strictly speaking, we should find other words. Not collective, holistic identity, but it is, will be too, too philosophical. So, yeah, it's almost like how Rene Guénon has that idea of qualitative versus quantitative. So what you're talking yes, about is, a, exactly, is a exactly. qualitative, yeah. Qualitative uh, unity. Uh, going on here, would you say that the liberal notion of equality, uh, which assumes everyone is fundamentally the same nature and the same, leads to neglect? Uh, it doesn't account for the different needs amongst humanity. So if you have all these different people in society and they assume they're the same, would you say that could also lead to a neglect and atomism of different types of humanities? Yes, and this egalitarian concept is not only in, in communism, it is modernity. So uh, um, the modernity started with the destruction of hierarchy, hierarchy because hierarchy is not just uh, um, about inherited possibility of one group of population to rule the other groups of uh, population. That is all already egalitarian understanding of hierarchy. Hierarchy is based on the natural differences of the quality of the inner being. And I think that uh, in in, in uh, Indian uh, tradition, in Hindu tradition, it is clearly seen that, for example, the highest highest levels of hierarchy, Brahmans, they don't rule. They have no administrative power. So they have spiritual authority, not because they have uh, reached this level, but because their soul is pure and their mind is orientated to to the heaven, to to the eternity, and they are considered highest not because they have uh, more power. They they have not the real political power that is in, in, in the hands of other. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, other kind of, of human being in Kshatriya. So hierarchy is something separate, something um, that depends on the inner quality of the soul, inner nature. And in traditional society, the distribution of um, these positions in the society reflected the structure of, 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 of the soul. And that there was a kind of similarity or identity between the state and the soul, between being and, and the man. And um, in that sense, Platonian, uh, in Platonian Republic, we see Western example of how we should understand hierarchy. That on, on the top of hierarchy, there are guardians, and they are not equal to the helpers of uh, uh, auxiliary um, uh, auxiliaries uh, of uh, guardians and not equal to uh, the workers. Uh, and th the difference consists in the relation to being, to logos, to being, uh, because philosophers are closer to being. Uh, and they should not rule, but define the main, the main line of human of uh, human uh, collective collective life of, of human society and the other should be disciples uh, of uh, of these uh, philosophers or brahmans and the most devoted to to the the, the brave brave exploits the the warriors uh, they should 
have an intermediate position between peaceful workers and transcendental orientated philosophers or Brahmins. So that is a hierarchy, as for example, the, the head is uh, on the top, uh, the heart is in the center, and other organs are, are uh, on the lowest part of, of the body. So and uh, so the society is the human being, is a kind of body and kind of soul, and the relation of being uh, the, um, defines uh, our position in society. That has nothing to do with equality, because, but this is not inequality, neither, because it is neither equality nor inequality. It is an uh, organic hierarchy that is based in the laws of the being, and uh, the, the knowledge of this sacred hierarchy was in the West before coming of political modernity and still exists in the East. And that it is not um, about uh, about explo exploiting uh, one group of uh, population other. The real inequality comes with capitalism because the rich people, they have all and poor people have nothing. When you make, uh, make when you make uh, the only uh, only mm, measure of the thing money, so you bring the real inequality. So uh, and, and uh, you bring this inequality on the pretension that you are destroying the hierarchy, this uh, obsolete uh, and. Uh, um, unjust uh, form of of uh, of uh, social construction. I am in favor of hierarchy by on, on uh, in favor not of um, um, uh, casual uh, or material or uh, financial financial capitalist uh, hierarchy. I think that the money should play almost no role. Uh, in the definition of the status of, of, of the man, the thought, the braveness, the clear clear mind, and other quality, the honest, honesty, and um, devotion, uh, uh, passion, capacity to create a beautiful thing, to, to sacrifice the life for the higher idols, that defines the higher, higher kind of people and opposite uh, opposite qualities disqualify um, the people but uh, i think that this uh, that is why liberal equalitarianism uh, e e equality is not equality at all uh, on the pretension to to make everybody equal they create the huge distance between rich and elite modern elite and the poor and the masses so the real um, vertical organization and real exploit, uh, so master-slave relation comes uh, come where came with capitalism and not right. uh, with uh, uh, middle age or or or, or pre-modern kinds of society. So this brings me right into my next question here. What influence have thinkers such as uh, Rene Guénon and uh, Julius Ebla had on your thoughts? I, I recognize that uh, that was the main influence, uh, and oh. I uh, consider myself to be maybe a typical, comparing with other traditionalists, by, but traditionalist. I am follower of René Guénon and Julius Evola. I share with them um, attitude uh, to the tradition and rejection of the modernity. So I am follower of them. Uh, and uh, but the, my, the, the main, main difference uh, with other traditionalists that I'm trying to apply the traditionalist principles to the domains that uh, most of traditionalists uh, never dare to apply. So I'm I'm trying to to study uh, geopolitics, uh, political ideology, modern or traditional philosophy. Um, science, uh, not only to criticize, but to, to understand. And uh, I, I don't think that only 
the, the fact to repeat what have uh, what, what have Genon and Devola said um, makes us traditionalists. We need to. Uh, I am in favor of existential traditionalism. We should live as traditionalists. We should fight as traditionalists because we, as, as traditionalists, we are put in the anti. Uh, to a poisonous anti traditional society, or how we could tolerate that. We could not live here if we are really part of tradition. So we should find, uh, fight against modern world as a wall of fault. Uh, and we should uh, follow Genon and his radicalism and rejection of modernity and to organize our life uh, in accordance to these principles. Uh, I am active. Uh, or offensive traditional is not right. only defensive and passive. That is the main difference. So yes, essentially we need to take uh, a traditional attitude and apply it to things that, that traditionally have not they've not been applied to in the modern world. Essentially, uh, exactly, exactly. We don't belong here. We don't belong here. And everybody, every real traditionalist understand that from the very beginning. It is not just a um, kind of education. Uh, to not belong here is existential, or ontological, metaphysical feature of the real traditionalist. And every traditionalist recognizes the other traditionalists, real traditionalists, immediately. We, 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 we don't need long discussions concerning modernity because uh, we don't belong here. We belong to the world of the sacred, of, of sacred, of the tradition, and we are, we are put in the reality that has nothing to do with the normal world. So we should fight until the end, until the last drop of our uh, blood against the reality we are we are living in, because that is anti-reality, that is illusion, that is worst of illusion. Uh, all manifestation, as Genon has, has said, is il illusion, but we are living in the most illusional illusion. We are, we are uh, uh, in the hell and uh, we don't belong here. We are not from the hell. We are in the hell, but, but we are not uh, from the hell. So our difference, and that is, uh, that, that is a main mark, uh, the, the sign of um, of the soul of traditionalists. Right, and going on from there, uh, what influence have thinkers such as Heidegger and Plato uh, had in your philosophy? Because I, I often know that both pe people take Heidegger and Plato to be kind of opposed to each other, but you seem to kind of bridge them in a way. So first of all, I'm, uh, I, for, I, I admire both. For, for me, um, Plato is the first philosopher and Heidegger is the last. Uh, I think that Plato is the uh, perfect manifestation of Apollonian, Apollonian logos, and Heidegger is the, the disciple pupil of Dionysus, uh, following Nietzsche. Nietzsche called himself the uh, philosophical disciple of Dionysus, and Heidegger was as well. So uh, there are two ontologies. Two, both of them are traditional. Both of them are sacred. Uh, vertical and horizontal, uh, both are not materialist. Uh, one transcendental, as in Plato, and the other uh, immanent, as in Aristotle or phenomenology or in uh, Heidegger. So I uh, admire both, but I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't too easy reconcile them. I don't think that we we, we should do that. So. We, we should accept the differences. We should uh, we should deal with the thing that uh, 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 we should uh, live uh, with contradiction. Contradiction is the uh, um, uh, the way to, to to get to the real truth, and uh, we should avoid uh, something when everything uh, is too easily fit together. For I, I think that we shouldn't uh, reconcile Plato and Heidegger. We could follow both of them uh, with the same inspiration, with the uh, same uh, uh, faith and admiration, but not trying uh, to, to, to put them together and to say, oh no, between them there is no contradiction. There are contradictions be between them and uh, that 
is the richness of, of the philosophy, the richness of, of the philosophical tradition that we could have both, uh, both uh, versions of the great logos, immanent and transcendental, and uh, both logos have nothing have nothing to do with this perverted anti logos of modern. Uh, atomism, uh, materialism, and uh, infamous tradition of Democritus. For example, I accept Plato, I accept Aristotle, and I reject Democritus. Uh, right. Atomism, materialism, Epicurus, for me, they are, uh, they are representative in uh, antiquity of the modernity. They are modern thinkers. Uh, as as well as uh, Lucretius. So yeah, the contradictions between Heidegger and Plato can kind of help us see uh, to a higher truth, essentially, because exactly, when... exactly, they they precisely they contradiction is very fruitful. So uh, we shouldn't to uh, appease them. We shouldn't to 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 de de delete uh, this contradiction. But uh, that is a kind of illumination of the highest, in the Plato's case, of highest horizons of, uh, of verticality, and in the uh, case of, of Heidegger, uh, the most concrete reality of our presence here. So Plato starts with presence there, to be present there, and Heidegger starts with to be present here. Uh, and here and there are both absolutely uh, uh, necessary to our, our uh, orientation uh, in, in the being. There and here, people and God, um, eternity and time, uh, time and being, being and, uh, and uh, existence, all, all, uh, all this, uh, all this poles of the reality, metaphysical, metaphysical poles of the reality, are extremely important and is not it is not about choice it is about understanding right and so you have a, a book on plato uh political platonism and i wanted to ask you what uh, in what way if any do you think plato has influenced your view of the ideal state so i think that uh, uh i i have started with genona with Avila, and uh for a certain time I uh, considered the ideal or perfect uh, organization, uh, for example, basing on Hindu society of the Varnas or the castes, uh, as um, Genon and Evola suggested. But uh, in Plato, we have exactly the same understanding of the nature of the sacred politics. Exactly. And that is Western, it is closer to us. Because we are heirs as well as uh, Western European of the Greek culture, we Russian, we we were educated by Greeks um, and converted into Christianity by Greeks, and we have uh, inherited, we have uh, received from Greeks uh, the knowledge, the philosophy, and I think that that is why uh, Plato is so important. His Republic is the Hinduism for the Westerners. Uh, it is the caste idea for for the Westerner, uh, Westerners. And I appreciate that. Uh, and more I read Plato, more I admire him. So that is that is really um, treasure, treasure of uh, of uh, great uh, sacred wisdom. It's more than human, I think, much more than human. Plato uh, the, 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 there are the, there are not people like like that. That's something more than human uh, being, Plato. And when they called him in the Platonist tradition, divine Plato, I I think it is quite quite close to the truth. He was something divine because all, including his expressions, his his humor, his. Uh, um rhetorics his his language it is something uh something that i i admire and more i uh, uh study plato less uh, less limit i see it is something absolute i would say and absolutely open uh, platonism is open system 
it is it, it, it not imposition of limits limits we uh, we put ourselves uh, but it is a kind of clear clear illumination of the being and the relation between human and being and uh, uh, in politics but not necessarily on not only politics but political dimension uh, is present everywhere including in philosophy and art in the culture uh, and that is not the chance not casually that plato has expressed his most important philosophical idea in the work called a republic, a state uh, for the day. And that is not a uh, coincidence uh, because uh, when we start seriously think we uh, already are, are involved in the politics. When we come to the politics, we are approaching the thought. So the politics and the thought is almost the same. Right. And so what do you think the ideal state or civilization for the Russian people would be? I think that for us, the kind of the, the, uh, 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 empire is the most organic form of uh, uh, of political being. And that is not just artificial creation. Um, we uh, consider ourselves a third Rome as hairs of the Byzantine Empire, because after the end of Byzantine Empire, this Rome has migrated to Russia. We strongly believed during many centuries in that, and we still believe that. That is our identity. So we are followers of the Rome, uh, and there, there was translatio imperi, translation of empire, uh, from first Rome to the second to the Constantinople and after the fall of the Constantinople to, to the Moscow. So we consider it to be a uh, kind of Slavic Russian Romans uh, he and hairs of Mediterranean Greek or Roman culture. And uh, I think that in, in the future, uh, the most normal kind of political organization would be monarchy and empire with the uh, a very important role uh, of church uh, and uh, without any resemblance with uh, modern political globalist liberal demo demo de democracy. So we need to defend our own values and create uh, and put uh, these values in the practical life. That is our destiny. And um, notwithstanding, notwithstanding that um, some youth and many other people of uh, modern Russian society are seduced or, or uh, perverted by the Western influence, by, by the modernity. Nevertheless, the, the same core, the healthy core of our people still is here, is present. And if we, if we awaken, uh, wake it so it could flourish. Uh, and that is our our mission, uh, uh, predicted by the uh, elders, by the Russian starets, that at the end of the time, the Russian Empire will be restored as the katechon, as the keeper, as the main obstacle to the devil, to the antichrist, to come in the reality. Our uh, religious people still believe in that, and um, still believe not only in our mission, but as well in our state, because we understand the Russian state as something sacred. It's not just artificial creation from below. It is, in, it is given us uh, from, by God and by destiny and by providence, and we need to use it properly. So, um... In the 90s, uh, a lot of people associated you with the uh, National Bolshevist Party. And I'd imagine now that because you are a traditionalist, you would reject this ideology completely. And my question for you is what led you to uh, become more of a traditionalist throughout your ideological development? So national Bolshevism was my my idea, was my 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 concept, because I've tried to to find inside of Soviet openly anti-traditionalist uh, uh, period something that was in connection to the deep 
and hidden identity, secret identity of our people. National Bolshevism, in my opinion, is the kind of reading, a Russian reading of the Soviet period, is not a, a, a rehabilitation of this uh, materialistic, atheistic regime, not, not, not at all. National Bolshevism, it is a very risky and dangerous um, exp um, journey to the um, uh, collective unconsciousness of the Soviet people in order to find there the roots of the sacredness that have uh, granted creation of great Soviet empire with the wrong ideology, but with some uh, resembles uh, resemble uh, uh, something, uh, some similarity to all the real empire. So that was uh, a kind of uh, uh, upside down empire of Stalinism, but still that was uh, against uh, liberalism, against the West, against the modernity, uh, modern West. Uh, and this, that was reading, uh, national Bolshevist reading of the Russian history, of the Soviet history with the Russian eyes. That was main idea, but uh, the movement, the uh, young movement, was uh, also based uh, on the anti-liberalism and the idea to join right and left anti-liberalism uh, in order to overcome it. And that uh, gave a very interesting artistic inspiration, cultural style, some kind of style. But uh, Limonov uh, uh, didn't share uh, my idea. He tried to create some radical uh, extremist uh, youth organization, and that uh, that has caused a kind of deviation of the uh, main idea. Uh, to some kind of uh, uh, contradictory position, and the end of the Russian national Bolshevism was uh, in the alliance with the liberals, because uh, everybody is accepted in national Bolshevism except liberals. Uh, but when Limonov, by purely by, by circumstances, by purely opportunistic uh, reasons, has concluded the anti-Putin alliance and pact with liberals, the worst pro-America, pro, uh, pro the spies. Uh, so that was the end and discreditation of the movement. But uh, I, I, I didn't become more traditionalist with age. I, was, I started with traditionalism. And as I have explained, I've tried to apply traditionalism to different realms where other traditions never dared. All right, I see. And uh, speaking once again here about liberalism, uh, what role do you think NATO plays in pushing liberalism, if any? So uh, now where are the NATO bases? There are LGBT plus uh, today and uh, uh, post-humanism um, tomorrow. NATO is not uh, only um, like a weapon or tool of Cold War. It is the weapon of the uh, of the globalism today. NATO is not defense of, of, of the West against the other, it is the instrument of expansion. So uh, NATO, NATO is military branch, military uh, hand of uh, globalists uh, today. And uh, I, I think uh, Trump was totally right that uh, NATO has no reason to exist except to serve to globalists as their weapon. So uh, America is, uh, as national country, should defend uh, itself. Europe is totally different geopolitical entity. So NATO has a reason only and uh, hatred to the other, and the other today are Russia and China. So the only reason to NATO to exist, it is the, uh, the will to destroy ourselves. So right. that, in my opinion, that is a military manifestation of the liberalism. Otherwise, it should be disbanded uh, just after the end of the Cold War, after after the uh, destruction uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, Varsavia Pact because that was the instrument of Cold War and there was no more communist camp, so NATO should be destroyed. Uh, and it's still here because it is not about communism, it, about, it is about Antichrist, I think. That is the way, the only one reason for NATO to exist, to, to serve the tool and weapon against Katechan. Right, it's, it's the, uh, the foot soldier of Satan, essentially. Um, what role do aesthetics play in the fourth political theory? I think that um, th this aspect of uh, fourth political theory is, isn't yet developed fully. So um, I, I, I would uh, uh, give an example what I would I would I would consider to be something like um, like uh, uh, fourth political uh, theory in aesthetic. It is combination of postmodern uh, electronic music with the folk uh, uh, folk uh, moti folk tradition. So electro folk, if you uh, if you prefer, and there are uh, that is combination of pre-modern and postmodern. Something that is um, that should come. Uh, tomorrow with uh, something that was before, and that is oriented against uh, today. So this alliance, aesthetical in aesthetics, uh, between uh, uh, yesterday and tomorrow against today, that could serve as a key to understand or to develop fully. Uh, um, aesthetical aspect of, of fourth political theory, but it is only uh, in the stage of germination. It is not yet fully formed, fully born. Uh, it is a kind of just first, first efforts to, to, to find the correct aesthetical manifestation of fourth political theory. And we are in the beginning of, the, of, of, of such process. So it would ideally be some sort of combination between traditional and postmodern elements. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I think electro folk uh, music in Russia there are some some groups, musical groups. They they are combining uh, radically archaic uh, tunes, music, words, very unusually. Uh, sounding uh, um, words of ra old Russian Russian songs uh, are almost unknown or forgotten. They carefully, carefully um, uh, uh, assemble uh, them, they put together, gather, and with some very special psychedelic te uh, techno music and. Uh, uh, result is remarkable. Uh, remarkable. There was, there is, there was the group called Volga, Taisia uh, Krasnopevtsa, Grebstel, and the other artists, uh, more or less known in Russia, who in uh, Nazelanne as well, who uh, are making uh, some experiments in that sense of oh, space druids the group of oh, my friend Dmitry Skvartsov uh, and they combine uh, this archaic archaic um, uh, tunes and words with new sound and th that is totally that gives totally um, new understanding of both of tradition and of modernity yeah, so this reminds me, and some of the people in the audience listening to this might remember my last video I did on the Serbian painter, Dragos Kalaj. I feel like he's an example. He was my so, friend. He was my yes, friend. Yes, I was just going to ask you that. Uh, you knew him, right? Could you tell me yes, about Yes, yes, I, I yes. Uh, I was invited by him to Serbia. I have met him many times in Russia. We were friends and we shared many points in common. He was a very interesting painter. And um, he he had he had almost the same um, all the, the same views as myself. Yeah, and uh, yeah, his his painting I feel like it really embodies that that uh, primordial aspect with the kind of more postmodern aspect. Uh, 
going on here, we spoke earlier about your thoughts uh, on Heidegger going on in Evola. And now I'm curious on some of the your thoughts on these more modern thinkers such as Hegel or uh, Deleuze. I, I am uh, inspired by Hegel. More I'm studying him, more I come to the conclusion that his uh, m- more known, uh, mostly known interpretation is wrong and false. So left uh, Hegel, uh, left uh, um, reading, uh, reading of Hegel from the left, uh, that is much more um, famous is correctly, uh, is uh, totally wrong. So he was a very conservative revolution thinker, uh, and I am trying to interpret his philosophy not as an idealist. Uh, I have found in Hegel many points, many uh, places when he rejected uh, idealism. He was not idealist, neither was Fichte nor Schelling. All three greatest figures of German idealism were not idealists. So that is very interesting uh, because they are much more close to phenomenologists and that is spiritual uh, in uh, spiritual phenomenology that is uh, in the center of Hegel. I think he and uh, Schelling and Hegel were very, very influenced by uh, Jacob Böhme the great uh, traditional metaphysical philosopher. And when we read Hegel with, uh, uh, with the eyes of Böhme, understanding, uh, taking in consideration uh, a very special dialectic of Böhme, uh, and the, the, we, we receive something totally different. It, starting from the early Hegel, I have dedicated some uh, time to, to, to study early uh, versions of his uh, encyclopedia of uh, philosophical science. Uh, and first versions uh, is very different, is, 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 uh, is very hermetic, is very sacred, sacred. And uh, it's difficult to, to get through. But if you manage to overcome all these uh, traps, uh, and uh, labyrinth uh, of Hegelian thought, you will be rewarded by, um, by, by great, great metaphysical landscape. He, uh, he uh, has um, manifested in his, in his, in his works. So uh, recently I, uh, I have uh, dedicated to Hegel some lectures, uh, some courses, uh, and uh, some articles. And m- maybe uh, if I put together all the all the text written on him, uh, I could receive it. It could be the the book, uh, not uh, the the complete uh, book. And I think that he is very very actual. He and Schelling, uh, both of them, they are very actual. So they are uh, uh, philosophers to rediscover. And uh, traditional reading of uh, Hegel and uh, Schelling is, uh, could enrich immensely, I, I presume, I, I hope, um, that traditionalists discuss. Because uh, he was conservative revolutionary thinker. Again, and Schelling. Yeah, and I think that uh, a lot of um, liberals like to take Hegel, and maybe misinterpret him to kind of justify their interpretation of time as this uh, infinite progress. Would you agree with that? Uh, but how we could speak about infinite progress, uh, progress with the end of history concept uh, right. located by, by Hegel. And uh, uh, Hegel uh, saw the end of the history and the creation of German monarchy. So uh, for him, the, uh, the kind of uh, the highest point of human history would be uh, abandoning of the civil society in favor of the sacred monarchy of of uh, Prussia. So uh, uh, that is, co- I think there is nothing liberal in Hegel, 
uh, com uh, there are some some aspects that communists have usurped. They, they, they have uh, stolen from Hegel some concept and they have perverted them. But right. uh, it was possible. And what uh, what li uh, but liberals ha have nothing at all with uh, in common with Hegel and Karl Popper. In that sense, is it is correct. He hated Hegel. Uh, and uh, normal liberals should hate everything and everybody, uh, starting from Hegel, Plato and Hegel, precisely as in the open society and its enemy. That is very, very nice book, a little bit liberal punk, because um, uh, Karl Popper uh, hates everybody who is not himself and not liberal and do it uh, uh, openly. And that is why we have Soros. That is purely crazy, mad, old, old liberal that hates uh, uh, humanity because they don't uh, fit to uh, it doesn't fit humanity doesn't fit to his liberal concept, and he's going to destroy everything in order to prove that open society could exist. But um, that is fanatical nihilism uh, in liberalism and I, I know that uh, Alexander Kozhev and other other liberal thinker tried to to give the liberal interpretation of Hegel but is, it is ridiculous it is right. basing or on or of total ignorance or the so uh, artificial perversion of Hegelian thought that it is ridiculous it is not serious yeah, they take what they want out of Hegel and ignore the rest is basically what I see. Yes, um, but it is uh, 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 insincere. We shouldn't uh, accept such a procedure. Right. And um, what also what I wanted to ask you, speaking of uh, liberalism, in another interview, I believe it was on a Canadian TV show, uh, you were speaking about the oh, – no, I'm sorry, it was with Michael Millerman. You were talking about the totalitarian aspects of liberal education. Um would you say that due to the fact that liberal education uh, assumes all people are the same, that also leads to a neglect within the uh, educational sphere? So uh, education uh, is the main, main tool of creation of identity. So liberals uh, understand very well uh, the principle of Michel Foucault that the real real power belongs to epistemology. So they try through education to 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 control everybody because because education is creation and in the process of uh, education. You create the human being. Finally, it is a kind of birth, but it is not birth of biological entity, but it is birth of social entity and social unit you create through education so liberal want to to create liberals and that education is a tool for that but uh, uh, little by little this uh, the strategy of liberal education uh, comes in a full contradiction to the traditional education of the western culture because traditional education was liberal arts and that served to nothing in the practical life so the real education is totally useless. It is important. So uh, to to that serves only to to create a spiritual being. It is not um, uh, pragmatic. It is not uh, utilitarian. The real education uh, was uh, um, reserved to, for the uh, people who wanted. To, to 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 get to the uh, to overcome themselves to to be something more than than human uh, uh, human tools of social mission and that was uh, for free men and the form of liberation from uh, utilitarian aspect of life so uh, there's not to gain something the, uh, the, the the traditional people in the west or in the east uh, were educated but to 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 come to the center of being it was existential from the very beginning uh, that was the process of initiation and uh, that is why liberals try to destroy all kind of traditional education they cancel uh, Dante, they cancel everything that uh, uh, was the path 
of liberal arts and they impose their own gender study and uh, artificial, very stupid uh, um, disciplines for monkeys. They try to, to make from the human being liberal monkeys. And that, that is a kind of, they, they don't educate anymore. They destroy the, the organic structure of verticality in, in human being. They impose the, the perversions. That is just destruction. It is not, they don't uh, make any kind of building. They, they don't create, they don't, uh, they don't construct, they deconstruct, they destroy with their education. They make finally uh, with their procedures uh, the sick, um, sick uh, uh, humanity because they prohibit to, to read the classical works, they prohibit to study uh, uh, traditional subject, uh, theology, philosophy, uh, every, every, everything is uh, um, given uh, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, LGBT reading. So modern liberal education is pure organized concentration camp, I would say. That is the destruction of the human dignity. And that serves as instrument. It is a kind of cultural genocide, liberal education. Yeah, so the, you know, they impose a uh, one way of thinking on everybody. There's no room for deviation, essentially turning everyone into basically, you know, replaceable cogs in a machine. Exactly. But I, I think that we need to, to, to finish uh, because I have the other appointments. Okay. Uh, Maybe you can ask some one more question or some remark. Yes, uh, I'll ask one more question uh, and then you can give your final thoughts and then we'll close it up here. Is that OK? OK. OK, so uh, you um, reject universalism, uh, as especially the idea of one civilization imposing their ideals on another. Now, would you say that there is also within your philosophy a kind of universalism in the sense that we all universally should agree not to impose universal ideals on each other? So in that sense, there's one value that everyone can agree on. Is that I don't think I don't think that uh, um, that is a real contradiction. For example, I don't invite everybody to accept for political theory. I just insist that forced political theory is possible. And I just uh, insist that uh, people who share this attitude and who reject liberal universalism could do that. And uh, we don't need permission to, to do that. It is our will and it is our, our, our desire. It is our uh, nature that speaks through this rejection of the liberal universalism. But I think that universalism is as well uh, as ethnocentric attitude to the reality is something very deeply rooted in the human society. So every, uh, including smallest society, they, con they consider themselves the, the center of the world. So uh, uh, what is the really dangerous in the globalism and the global liberal universalism? It is the kind of uh, measure. It is totally the measure. Uh, it is main scene in Greek culture was uh, uh, was hubris, hubris. The special Greek words that that is absence of the of the limit. So uh, I, I think that uh, that universalism uh, up to the several, some level uh, is the natural feature of all. Uh, human communities and society, big or small, but uh, in uh, globalist uh, uh, universalism and liberal universalism, there is no measure anymore. That is outside of any boundaries. That is um, deleting any 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 logical and reasonable uh, uh, reasonable frontiers borders. Uh, that is, uh, and they impose universal. They they believe in universality of the LGBT with uh, with some uh, mental illness. It is just the madness. So that is uh, hubris. That is uh, a violent, intolerant, 
uh, obsession uh, by by something. So, uh, but some universalism I could uh, I could accept. I'm, for example, I'm not on uh, I'm, uh, I'm on the fence of uh, relat relativism. Relativism. I am not uh, uh, because I believe in God, who is the only one and in true, and it is Christian God. But I understand the Muslims who believe in in their God with the same passion, with the same sincerity, with the same resolution. Uh, that creates a kind of theoretical contradiction. But I don't like to 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 solve it. Uh, in an artificial way. Uh, I think right. that we should follow our path to our God and who is absolute and who is universal and we will be rewarded. And so uh, we should uh, think about our own uh, our way and we should give the other the possibility to follow their ways. We should not oblige them. We should not uh, violate, violate their their free will and i believe strongly in free will so uh, at the same time that is nothing against uh, the existence of universal absolute I, for me for myself the things are uh, um, easily compatible uh mr dugan uh thank you for joining me today here uh we didn't get to all the questions uh, i do have some more maybe we could if you're interested we could do another interview this was very enjoyable Okay, um, okay. In, in some time, we could repeat that. Thank yes. you. Yes. Uh, and if you have any final remarks, please go ahead. Best wishes. Okay, thank you.